In this example, I'd like to look at the development of writing down the equilibrium equations for a truss structure. So I have a truss here that's composed of eight bars and five nodes. And what I'd like to do is write down the equilibrium equations for this truss. So the, the standard form that we have developed is A transpose R equals F. So R is the vector of bar forces, F is the vector of the applied loads, and A transposes this matrix that encodes all the geometric information about the truss. So let's look first at, say, node 1 of our system. So if we have node 1, there's some kind of reaction force acting at node 1. And then I have a bar force R6 times the unit vector that goes from node 1 to node 5. I have a bar force R2 times the unit vector from node 1 to 2, and I have a bar force R1 that goes from node 1 to 3. So the unit vector is E with two subscripts. First subscript is the starting node, the ending subscript, the second subscript is the ending node, and they're of unit length. And so the equilibrium equation is now easy to write down, it's just the sum of the forces equals 0. So we'll have E13 R1 plus E12 R2 plus E15 R6 plus FR1 equals 0. And because of the form that we use, where we put the force on one side, the applied external forces plus the support forces, uh, that is going to change all of these terms here that have a minus sign in front of them and then this will just become equals FR1. Then we can use the property of these unit vectors with the minus sign which says that this will be E31R1 plus E21R2 plus E51R6 equals FR1. So that becomes our very first equilibrium equation. Now we can walk our way through the truss using this exact same pattern. So let's go ahead and we'll put all of this in sort of a matrix form. So we have five nodes, so we'll have five equations. So the first equation is going to be E31, E21, and then third bar doesn't play any role, fourth bar plays no role, fifth bar plays no role, the sixth bar we have some interaction with E51. The seventh bar, again, does nothing. And the eighth bar also plays no role. So this is going to be our matrix here. We may need a little bit more room. This is going to multiply into the vector R, which is R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, R7, R8, and that's going to be equal to all the applied loads plus the support re reaction. So we have a support reaction at node 1. And now we can move on to node 2. Node 2 is going to involve R2, 7, and 3. So that means that in columns 7, 2, and 3, we're going to get non-zero entries. So here we'll have 0, because bar 1 plays no role. Bar 2, we're going to have E, 1, 2. Bar 3, we're going to have E, 4, 3. So the first node is the node that we're going away from, or 2, rather. Uh, bar 4 plays no role. Bar 5 bar 6, bar 7 is going to give me E5, 2, and bar 8 plays no role. So I'll give me my 0. And now we can look at node 3. Node 3 is in the upper corner up here. So we're going to have 4, 5, and 1 will provide us non-zero entries. So columns 4, 5, and 1 will have non-zero entries. So column 1 is going to be E1, 3. Let's see. I guess there's a mistake 
in the other in the second equilibrium equation here that should have been a 4 2 okay and now back to our third equilibrium equation bar 1 gives us e13 bar 2 nothing bar 3 nothing bar 4 is going to be e43 and bar 5 will be e53 0 0 0 You'll notice that what we're going to end up with is only two entries per column here, so that's a way of checking, and the subscript should swap between those entries in those columns. So, for instance, I had 3, 1, and 1, 3. I should get nothing else in that column. So if we go to node 4, node 4 is going to involve, again, bar 4, but now bar 8, and then again bar 3. So nothing in the first row, second, the third row, I'm going to get an E to 4. And then the fourth column, I'll have an E34. Nothing in the fifth column. Nothing in the sixth column. Nothing in the seventh column. And then in the eighth column, finally, I'll have an E54. So the second subscript is giving me the uh, node that I'm looking at. And then if we go off to node 5 for its equilibrium equation, it's sitting right here, and it involves the bars 5, 6, 7, and 8. So the last four columns are going to have non-zero entries. So we'll have 0, 0, 0, 0, and now we'll have E3, 5 for bar 5. Bar 6 connects to node 1, so that'll be E1, 5. Bar 7 connects to node 2, so E2, 5 and bar 8 connects to node 4, so E, 4, 5. So this gives me the equilibrium equations, and I need to finish off the applied loads. Um, there's a support reaction on node 2, so we'll say FR2. Node 3 is free, so that'll be a 0. Node 4 has an applied load, P, acting in the horizontal direction, so we'll call that the 1 direction, and node 5 is free. So we can tidy this up here. And so those are our equilibrium equations for this 8-bar truss with 5 nodes. And of course, the exact values of these vectors E will come from the geometry of the situation. So for instance, E1, 3 would be the vector 0, 1. So we're always using column vectors. Uh, the vector E2, 1, for example, would be 0, minus 1. And I'd have to specify more geometry to be able to get, say, the vectors that go off to the center node.